Heists. Whether in the form of a film, show, or in today's case, a game, heists are a high-stakes moment of tension that leave the watcher, reader, or player on the edge of their seat, a perfectly calculated frenzy of thievery that either results in prison or wealth. But what if we change that up just a bit? What if we removed the perfectly calculated portion? That is exactly how I would describe Monaco. Monaco is a chaotic indie heist game that has cute little top-down graphics and sound design ranging from heavenly to, well, dog. Yeah, that sounds more like a furry with constipation than a dog, but at least the background music was nice. I've been playing Monaco practically since its release in 2013. I could hardly understand the story at the time, I mean, that's understandable given that I was literally seven, but even then I absolutely adored this game. That love has stayed with me through all these years, and with age I've come to truly understand the game's brilliance. Monaco created within me a thirst for a good heist that I could only quench by doing one of two things. Watching Ocean's Eleven, a movie that cost $85 million to create, or play Monaco. But what is it about Monaco that makes it just so darn fantastic? Join me, and we can find out together. Ooh, ooh, what's that? Ooh, ooh, what's that sound mean? Ooh. I think it means you're trying to sneak through this video without subscribing first. If you think you can try and creep through this video without subscribing, I'll heist your kneecaps, big guy. So scroll on down, press that button, it switches off the alarm. So it's either you subscribe or you hear this noise the whole video. Your choice, buckaroo. Good choice. Monaco has very simplistic gameplay. Get in, get the MacGuffin, and get out. Whether you get spotted and what you collect along the way hardly matters. This gameplay model creates hilariously chaotic moments. Here's an example. Alright, let's uh, re-up that guy's sleep, and then we can turn off the lights. Okay, they're coming to the lights now, but we're gonna put on a disguise and grab a gun. Run down through here. Apparently these guys are just unconcerned with the lights being off, so we'll chloroform them real easy. And run in here. This is where we need to be, okay? Oh wait, oh, oh god, no, 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 the lights are coming back on, oh god, all the security system, dude, oh no, oh god, um, this is fine, this is fine, okay, uh, what we'll do is we'll sit in front of the door, and we'll shoot them as they walk in, I think we got like one or two shots or something, oh, oh you know what, that seemed to have worked out pretty well, uh, let's just get out of here, just get out of here, there's more coming, quick, quick, quick. These are some of my favorite situations to be in, running away, narrowly avoiding guards, and slipping just out of their grasp before they kill me. But things start to get slightly more complicated with Monaco when it comes to stuff like characters. Like in any good heist, everyone has their own skill. Each of these skills are embodied in a specific character, and they range from picking locks quickly to straight up breaking down entire walls. There's eight characters in all, so when you see the character select screen, you have plenty of options. But your decisions don't end there, because you can equip items. There's shotguns, smoke bombs, machine guns, EMPs, high explosives, rocket launchers? It's safe to say that a criminal with a rocket launcher is either going to make a lot of money or die immediately, and that's exactly what happens in Monaco. So as you progress through the game, these items and characters are slowly revealed to you. However, when playing solo, the induction of these items is just not enough to slow down the onslaught of enemies that gets thrown at you in the last third of the game. I quickly went from never dying to dying one to four times every single level. Maybe this was bad balancing, or perhaps I just got tired of sneaking around so much and thought that simply running through a room filled with armed guards was a great idea. You know what? Screw it. Uh, do you want a baguette? Yeah, I should have expected that one. However, what Monaco lacks in gameplay progression, it more than makes up for in story progression. And while I wouldn't describe Monaco's story as a literary masterpiece, it is still incredibly well written. The story flows remarkably well into each level, and this is in large part due to a short dialogue between characters about the mission ahead. The main goal of the game is to escape Monaco and to start a new life. The band of criminals robs a bank to pay the gentleman, a smuggler and con man, to get them out of the country. But what kind of dirty criminals could leave the country without first filling their pockets? And that's where the game's 49 story missions come into play. Stealing cash, destroying evidence, helping other criminals, and evading the police. But you want to do all these things in style. You want to look good when you rob a bank. And that's 
where Monaco's graphics come in. I personally think the graphics are fairly acceptable, however, do you remember that dialogue I mentioned earlier? That's where the main problem with the graphics lies. The game would benefit heavily from having a custom portrait of each character pop up when they speak. But there's one more reason that the graphics are so simplistic and streamlined. There's a workshop. That's right, there's a level creator right there in the game for you to use. You can place enemies, walls, toilets, guns, cars, anything you want. It's a package deal, folks, because you can create multiple floors to your madness. And if you're really fancy, you can even add your own story. Some of these levels are incredibly popular, being tutorials for characters and equipment, and others being complicated masterpieces with excellent storylines that clearly took hours to create. I myself have only made one level, and I was a hyperactive seven-year-old at the time, so it's about as good as Pizza Hut. It isn't. Now, if by this point my stance on Monaco isn't abundantly clear, then you have not been paying attention, my friend, because I adore this game. You can find Monaco on Steam for the low, low price of $14.99, so go on over, get yourself a copy, and maybe play it with some friends. It'll be a good time. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see y'all next time.